everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Fen Talks podcast. On today's episode, we're featuring Derek Pfaff, who is one of our real estate firm directors who happens to work out of Sedona, Arizona. In today's conversation, we're focused on personally and professionally succeeding while working remote. For those that haven't had the opportunity to meet you, or maybe they haven't read your bio, or maybe they haven't traveled up to Sedona, and if they haven't, hopefully they do, because it's a beautiful part of the state. Uh, So for those individuals that don't know you, would you mind just explaining a little bit more about who you are and the types of clients that you serve? Um, As you said, I'm Derek Bob. I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I've uh, practiced law for going on, I think, 23 years now. Seems crazy that it's been that long. Um, I practice primarily in real estate, uh, just general real estate practice, acquisition, uh, sales of property, both developed and undeveloped. I uh, do a lot of leasing work. Um, have some experience on solar projects uh, that come up you know, from time to time. A lot of sun here in Arizona, so there's quite a bit of opportunity for that. Uh, but overall, just a you know, general wide ranging real estate practice. And you've been working remote now for how many years? I'll be going on six years now. So you were doing it before the COVID-19 trend. I know a lot of individuals have had to transition to working from home, whether they wanted to or not. Uh, I know it's been an interesting time, but you personally made the choice a number of years ago. So I thought it'd be fun to get your perspective and hear some winning strategies from someone that's been practicing and doing this for a number of years. So my initial question for you is, why did you choose to start working remote in the first place? Um, I wanted to try something different. My uh, family and I were living in Texas at the time, and we had talked about coming back to Arizona, um, be closer to my family. Uh, we wanted some more of a little bit milder climate than Phoenix had to offer. So we had been in Sedona on vacation and looked into the possibility of, of working remotely. Um, I found that it just really wasn't necessary for me to be in the office every day, most of my work. You know, 99% of my work was done via email or telephone. Uh, this was before Zoom and all that became very common. Um, so I put some feelers out and uh, a friend of mine who was a director at Fenimore at the time reached out to me and said that they were looking for someone to do real estate work. So I came out and interviewed um, and floated the idea of working remotely from Sedona. Uh, thought it'd be a nice change of pace. Uh, get rid of the commute um, and just be able to spend more time with my family and, you know, being productive as opposed from to traveling to and from the office. And I'm just curious, has that reason for why you chose to work remote, um, you know, six years ago, has that changed over the last couple of years or has it always kind of remained consistent? As it's to- been pretty consistent, you know, avoiding the commute. It's always a big thing, you know, losing an hour to an hour and a half a day. Uh, driving to and from the office. Um, I enjoy not having to do that. Um, It's just, I find it all around more convenient uh, and more productive to be able to just, you know, get up in the morning, get ready and get started on my work. So yeah, I would say it's probably stayed the same. Absolutely. Well, hey, I love that. I know from a time and energy management standpoint, it's really worked out well for me. I continue to work from home myself. Um, So, you know, for those that are interested and maybe they're in the legal field, they've been thinking about, huh, do I want to maybe try and keep this thing going? Maybe I want to stay working remote for a long time. Do you have any like winning strategies, best practices that you would encourage them to think about or to implement uh, as they look to continue to work remote for a number of years? Well, I mean, I think the first thing you have to do is, you know, talk to your firm and talk to the people you're working with and, you know, find out what their comfort level is with that. Um, You know, some people uh, were fairly skeptical in the beginning about whether it would work out. Um, I think it obviously has, but I understand there was some reluctance in the beginning to think that, well, we could have somebody who's going to work remotely 100 percent of the time. Um, So first off, kind of talk to your your colleagues at your firm and and find out what their appetite would be for you to do that kind of work. Um, I think you find now more people will be receptive to that than there were, you know, say five or six years ago, because a lot of people have been working from home due to COVID. Um, So first, you know, talk to your colleagues, 
uh, talk to your clients. Um, I've discussed, I had discussed the possibility with several of my clients uh, that were staying with me and all of them just said, look, I don't see you anyway. Um, I frankly don't care where you are as long as you do my work and, you know, get it done and get it taken care of in a timely manner. Uh, that's really all that's important to me. Um, so, you know, those are the two things right off the bat you need to address. Uh, make sure your clients, your colleagues are comfortable with the prospect. Um, other thing you need to do, you need to invest in good equipment. You know, you don't want to use a computer that has, you know, iffy internet capability or, you know, don't use that Tandy computer that you have in the back of your closet, you know, get a decent system um, and make sure it interfaces well with whatever online system your firm uses. Um, that's one of the things I think has been great about Fenimore is that they've been fairly forward thinking in terms of uh, technology. Uh, so it was really pretty seamless from my transition from my old firm uh, in Texas to Fenimore here. There wasn't, you know, there weren't a lot of hiccups or things to iron out because the infrastructure was already in place. Um, that being Citrix, which is what I work from. I think some people work from VPN and, and other systems, but, um, you know, you need to make sure you have the equipment that's, you know, capable of doing the work. Um, the other thing I would say is make sure you have a workspace. Um, my old home back in Texas, the office was kind of out in the middle of the house. And uh, for the brief period of time, I was at Fenimore before we moved back to Arizona. It was very difficult to get anything done because they were sort of in the middle of all the activity in the house. Um, I'm now in a, uh, have a standalone office um, that's off to the side away from the rest of the house. So everybody else can be doing their thing and it doesn't uh, necessarily interrupt me. Now, if the kids are yelling at each other in the other room, then, you know, different story. But for the most part, I'm able to just sort of isolate myself and do my job and, you know, get my work done uh, quickly in a timely manner. So Derek, I love that you brought up the fact of the importance of reaching out to your clients and asking them with their comfort level of you working from a remote location. I think that's great as you're looking to build that relationship and rapport with your existing clientele. But let's talk about new clients. As you continue to work remote for a number of years, have you found that new clients are you know, equally as on board and supportive of the working remote um, you know? the working remote concept and, or my other question for you, part two would be um, for those new clients, are they only in the Sedona area or are you bringing clients from other parts of the state of Arizona or other parts of the country? Um, so to answer your first question, you know, most of the people I talk about, talk to about it. Um, sometimes I don't even you know, know until I specifically bring up the fact that I work remotely. Um, most people were pretty just sort of, oh, okay, you know, I hear it's pretty up there. Um, they don't spend much time in our offices in Phoenix and, you know, our attorneys don't necessarily spend much time in their offices. Uh, so I think most people are pretty receptive to it. Um, you know, again, as long as the work's done and I'm available to, you know, take calls and respond to emails in a timely manner, uh, I think most people are pretty comfortable with it. Um, in terms of work opportunities, um, I'm licensed in Nevada, Texas, and Arizona. And I do work in all three states. Um, most of my work is, is based out of Phoenix with some out of, out of Houston and that area. Uh, Sedona, not a lot of legal, legal work up here that I've found, at least not in the, the type of area that I practice. Um, so really most of my work is, has been you know, elsewhere, uh, which has worked out well with the remote arrangement. So I would love to get your perspective on what do you think the future of Fenimore or just the legal industry in general looks like as it relates to working remote? Well, I think the cat's been let out of the bag, as they say, you know, I think people, you know, with the COVID situation, they were forced to work remotely. And I think a lot of people have found that they like it. Um, you know, there are some diehards that still want to go in the office. And there's some people that have to go in the office based on the nature of their practice. You know, obviously if you're spending a lot of time in court, um, and, you know, meeting with teams in the office and, and preparing for litigation, you know, that may not be as conducive to working from home. Uh, but I think for a lot of people in more transactional practices like mine, they're finding out it works very well um, and, you know, enjoy it. They're more productive, assuming they can, you know, keep the distractions at bay. Um, so I think long-term, both for Fenmore and, you know, 
but other firms potentially are going to see more people taking advantage of a work from home arrangement, uh, which I think is good, you know, for the firm's bottom line because you know office space obviously is very expensive, and I think it's one of the aside from payroll is one of the main expenses that law firms occur. And I think it is more people work from home. Law firms are going to find that they don't need as much floor space to you know for people to work. I have an office in Phoenix that I share with you know several other attorneys who I think you know tend to work remotely for the most part or spend most of their time out of the office, and it works fine. I don't need a parking space. I don't need a you know dedicated office, so the firm can save that money, and you know that contributes both to the profitability of the firm. Uh, it also gives us the opportunity to add more value or give more value to the clients. You know, we're not having to raise rates as quickly to keep up with rentals and other, you know, expenses that are saved if someone is working from home as opposed to coming into an office every day. So Derek, if there was just one thing that you're hopeful that listeners take away from this conversation, what would it be? It works. Um, you know, you have to, you know, you have to make it work. You have to, you know, find ways to avoid the distractions that are, are inherent in working from home. Um, but, you know, if you have the right equipment and you have the right support from your firm, um, I will say having a good uh, help desk is, is critical because working from home, there are a lot of little challenges uh, there. And our help desk is great about getting things up and running when there's a problem. But um, the main thing I would say is just try it, you know, try it. Don't be afraid to uh, give it a shot and see if it works for you. Um, you know, don't throw your hat over the wall and commit fully to working from home full time because you know maybe it won't work for you. Maybe your clients won't won't like it. But um, I think people should give it a try. And I think you know, a lot of people were forced to do so based on circumstances of the past year or so. And I encourage people to take advantage of that and, and see if they can make it work for them. So we talked a lot about the professional side, but I'm curious, I'd like to get your thoughts on how this has positively impacted your personal life as well. Well, I get to spend, I can spend a lot more time with my family. Um, when I was working in Houston, there were, you know, a lot of late nights where you know, work till, you know, 11, 1130 and then drive home for an hour. And by the time you get home, everybody's asleep. You know, here I can stop for dinner or I can help my kids with their homework if they need something. Um, Sometimes I have to mediate disputes uh, if my wife's not around to do so. But um, by and large, it's been positive because I've just I've been able to be around my family a lot more, uh, take a more active role in parenting as opposed to you know being the voice on the phone telling them to stop fighting over the PlayStation or whatever. So lots of positives across the board, whether it's personally or professionally, it doesn't matter where you're working, if it's Sedona, Arizona, or even if it's Houston. I know Derek, you work there as well. Um, there is some great opportunities to find success with working remote. So Derek, appreciate you taking the time for, to join us for this episode of the Fentox podcast.